Hi there! After so much waiting, it is time to continue the design and the construction of the Termin version 2. Today's feature is the audio generator, which is composed of the three elements pitch reference oscillator, pitch variable oscillator and etherline mixer. This video will be centered on the first element of the three, the pitch reference oscillator, a totally revised design, much more stable and reliable than the one from version 1. But, before getting into the details, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell, if you haven't done so already. You will be automatically informed of new videos and in addition you will greatly help this channel to become stronger and to make more and more videos at precise intervals. Let's begin. So here is the schematic of the new pitch reference oscillator. Those who saw the videos of the first generation of the Termin will immediately notice that this is totally different design from the previous one. Rather than using a single transistor, this time the oscillator is made with two operational amplifiers. I specifically choose the NE5534P op-amp for its low noise and its stability with temperature changes. This, along with the choice of using a film capacitor for the timing RC section and quality ceramic capacitors for the power supply and for the compensation circuitry, makes the oscillator extremely stable. Also, the use of a multi-turn potentiometer for the pitch frequency regulation allows for a very detailed tuning of the pitch antenna sensitivity that will be part of the pitch variable oscillator section. The op-amp U1 on the left side is the active element of the oscillator itself. The right side of the picture shows a second op-amp that is used as an impedance adapter and also as an amplification stage. The RC timing circuit of the oscillator is made of out of resistors R6, R1, R2 and capacitor C1. C1 is charged through the resistors, of which the equivalent resistance can change from 1 kilo ohm when the cursor is all the way up, up to about 1.45 kilo ohm when the cursor is all the way down. This provides a range of output frequencies that is just right to correctly tune the sensitivity of the pitch antenna, which depends on the frequency difference between this pitch reference oscillator and the pitch variable oscillator, which we will see in the next episode. When C1 is discharged, the output voltage of the op-amp is positive, and therefore the capacitor is charged through the resistors R1, R2 and R6, and the voltage of the capacitor is used to drive the negative input of the op-amp. The op-amp output is also reduced in half by resistors R3 and R4, and this voltage, the resulting one, is applied to the positive input of the op-amp. Once the voltage on the capacitor exceeds the voltage of the positive input, the op-amp switches the output to be negative. At this point, the capacitor starts discharging and makes negative also the voltage of the positive input of the op-amp. This way, the op-amp keeps its output at a negative voltage until the capacitor voltage becomes lower than the negative voltage on pin 3. Then the cycle starts all over again. The oscillation frequency is proportional to the inverse of the product of the R and C values of the RC timing circuit and 2 times pi. Capacitor C2 is used for internal compensation of the op-amp, as suggested by its datasheet. Capacitor C3 and C4 are used for filtering the voltage of the power supply, which is a dual voltage, plus 12 and minus 12, with respect to the ground. The output of the oscillator goes to resistors R5 and R7. R7 in particular needs to be tuned to obtain the best symmetry of the output signal of the oscillator. Not that Although this oscillator is based on an RC circuit, which intuitively would provide a square wave when used with a voltage comparator in a similar circuit, the output is basically a triangle wave instead, with smoother tips, which make it very similar to a sine wave. This is because the NE5534P is not a voltage comparator, but in reality is a regular op-amp, which is not able to switch almost instantaneously when the voltage difference at its inputs requires that. Although the output is not exactly a sine wave, the heterodyne process will still work fine because the extra harmonics of the signal will generate final frequency that will be filtered out in the mixer. Using an RC oscillator in this stage with a film capacitor makes this oscillator very stable in frequency, 
which is what we wanted to achieve based on the experience made with the version 1 of the theremin. So the output of this stage goes to the positive input of the second op amp, which is configured as an amplifier with an input impedance which is almost infinite and an output impedance which is almost zero. This helps even further the stability of the system because the input of this stage will not draw any current from pin 6 of the first op amp and therefore will not interfere with the charge and discharge of capacitor C1. The negative feedback of the amplifier on the right is given by the trim pot R10, which will need to be tuned to avoid the saturation of the op amp, which will distort the output signal. The op amp is also equipped, like the previous one, with a compensation capacitor C7. In addition, between pins 1 and 8, there is also a trim pot with a cursor connected to the positive of the power supply through the resistor R9. This trim pot is used to correct internal deficiencies of your pump that would cause an, a non-perfect symmetry of the output signal with respect to ground. In a few moments I will show you in lab how all these trim pots affect the output signal of the oscillator, so please watch him to see that. So let's now take a look at the actual circuit. You can see here on my breadboard that I have already built the whole pitch reference oscillator, also the pitch variable oscillator and the mixer. However, these two parts are not tested yet, so I'm not going to talk to about this today, but I will concentrate on this part, the pitch reference oscillator. To start with, you can see the two operation amplifiers over here and over here. The first one on top is the one that is actually the oscillator. The second one is instead the one that does the amplification and the impedance adjustments. Basically, this is the circuit that we already saw. This one is the oscillator here on top and this one is the amplifier over here. Let's spend a moment on the power supply filtering capacitors C3, C4, C5 and C6. As you can see over here, I put these capacitors very, very close to the pins of the circuit. This is one, this is the other one, and these are the, the last two of them. Why did I do that? Because we want to have those capacitors as close as possible to the pins of the integrated circuits so that there will be almost no resistance, zero, in between them and the power pin of the I see, and see this way the capacitor will be able to react instantaneously or almost instantaneously to what's going on on the power supply ripple and other kind of noises and eliminate them completely, even if they are relatively small. In fact, these are exactly 0.1 microfarad each. These are ceramic capacitors of a very good quality. They will not change their value over time or because of temperature. The RC circuits that provide the frequency at which the oscillator works is made up of this capacitor, uh, which is a film capacitor, and these resistors 1, 2 and 3. This one in particular is the one through which we can regulate, we can change the frequency of the oscillator so that we can increase the sensitivity of the pitch antenna depending on the shape and size of the body of the person that plays the termin. The other thing to look at are the, these three trim pots. Basically this trim pot is the one over here, the one that controls the balancing of this IC. This trim pot is basically supposed to be tuned in such a way that the DC component on the output of the op amp be completely zero. And so only the actual signal comes out, the actual signal in alternate current. This other trim pot is the 500k1, which means it's this. This one basically divides the output of the of second op amp in, in two parts. This is basically is like having two different resistors, one on this side and one on this other, and basically these two resistors act in such a way that they will generate on this side a voltage that is a, a percentage of the one that is on the output. So basically with this trim pot we can decide how much we want of the output signal to go back to the negative input. Basically this trim pot uh, regulates the amplification of the system because it's inserted in the negative feedback loop of the amplifier. And finally there is this one here, this is a 10k trim pot, which is this one. Basically it has to be tuned in such a way that the voltage on this point has its signal as close as possible to a sine wave. So if the cursor is all the way up, the signal here would be maximum and basically will be exactly the same as the points, uh, the pin 6 over here. 
and we will have a high signal coming in the input of the amplifier, which causes a distortion of the signal. On the other hand, if it is all the way down, then the signal would be minimum and maybe would be not enough to control correctly the amplifier over here. So we have to find the right position of this uh, two input in order to have the best signal possible at the output. So and basically that's it, all the other components are exactly connected the way uh, schematic describes. And uh, I also put out a couple of uh, test points this one here, which is basically the output of the oscillator, so it's pin 6 of the second IC, and this one is connected to ground, so we can use these test points to connect the oscilloscope and see what's going on in there, how the, the system behaves. And that's what now we are going to do. Uh, I'm going to show you the output signal, I'm going to show you how it can be manipulated using these three, three inputs, and how the frequency of the signal can be manipulated using this potentiometer. So let's now connect connect the probe of the oscilloscope to the circuit and let's see how it behaves. So this is ground and this is the output of the circuit. Then let's power it up. As you can see I'm using the actual power supply from the terminal to do that. So you can see the signal right now. It's basically an enlarged a little bit. So you can see it's basically a triangular wave, like I said before, where the points, the peaks, bottom it up are kind of smoothed up and now let's see what happens when we manipulate the trim parts. Let's start with the 500k1 which is basically controls the amplification of the amplifier. Look. See, so basically we want to make sure that we put this one the right way. So to have the best possible symmetrical signal. Then this one, this is the 100K that controls the balancing. So let's try to move this one. So you can see the way it changes shape and moves on, the, on one side or the other and goes a little up or down on one side or the other, depending on how we set the trimmer. We want to make sure the wave is perfectly symmetrical with respect to the horizontal axis. And so this is the point where we want it to be. And finally, the last one. The last one is the symmetry of the tuning. Let's take a look at what happened here. You see now the wave is basically inclined toward the right side. Now it's smaller. So we want to go high as much as we can without deforming the wave and without making it asymmetric. So I guess this is the best we can do at this point. So this is it. This is our signal on the picture reference oscillator. Right now is running at 196 kilohertz. Now if I start moving the frequency path, you can see that the signal on one side decreases. It's a multi-time, so, so the minimum is around 196 now. And if I turn it in the opposite direction, see, I was able to go up to 257 kilohertz. So there is a good range here, and this is optimal because it will allow us to regulate better the sensitivity of the pitch antenna. Remember from previous videos that the output audio signal on the, on the theremin depends on the difference between this signal and the one from the pitch variable oscillator. And the pitch variable oscillator has an antenna on it which allows us to change the frequency by moving the hand close to it. However, also the shape of the person that plays the instrument, if it is a tall guy or a small guy or uh, I don't know if it stands a little further away or a little too close to the termin, the antenna will sense this person and eventually the person will have to adjust this potentiometer to have the maximum range of frequencies when he moves the hand toward and away from the antenna. So this is it for uh, the pitch reference oscillator. In the next videos I will go ahead with describing the pitch variable oscillator and the mixer and at the end I will put all together on a PCB which I will make you available Today we went through the schematic of the first section of the audio generator, the pitch reference oscillator. 
Since I didn't want you to wait any longer for the next Theremin video, I decided to divide what was supposed to be a single video of the audio generator in different parts. The following parts will come very soon, and I don't want you to wait any longer for them. Once the audio generator is completed, although there will be a number of missing parts in the Theremin, we will still be able to start experimenting with it, and we will be able to see if the effort of designing a new one was really worth it. If all goes as expected, I believe this instrument will work like a commercial Theremin, a real professional music instrument. Thank you for following this video to the end, and since you are still here, please give me a thumb up, which will greatly help improving the visibility of this video, so others can enjoy it too. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. This helps the channel itself, and not just the video. And finally, if you really, really want to help, please send me a donation. Details are in the description below and at the end of the video. See you on the next video, and as usual, Happy experiments!